Today's Supreme Court handed down one of its most anticipated decisions of the term. This is a case involving the challenge that Hobby Lobby uh, presented to a provision of the Affordable Care Act that required that employers cover contraception for their female employees. The Hobby Lobby store, as well as Consulga Wood, uh, are family owned and these families uh, profess that their um, religious beliefs are permeate through their, uh, their businesses. They challenge the birth control mandate uh, under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act uh, prohibits the government from any uh, regulations that substantially burden uh, religious beliefs. Uh, also at issue in the case is a question of whether a corporation can even make a religious freedom claim. The government, when they argued this case before the court, said that corporations in fact don't have uh, the kind of religious freedom claims that individuals can have, and therefore they said that the companies at issue in this case don't even have standing, that is that they can't make this kind of claims in court. So what did the court decide today? It was a 5-4 decision along uh, what we've come to see as predictable conservative liberal divide. Justice Alito, in his opinion for the majority of the court, held that the requirement um, that closely held corporations uh, need to provide contraception under the Affordable Care Act was a violation of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Uh, he limited this holding to closely held corporations, which the IRS has defined as a corporation in which the majority of stocks are owned by five or fewer uh, individuals. Having made that claim, he then concluded that the claim uh, was um, a valid one because although the government did have a substantial interest that it was pursuing in this case, which is insurance coverage including preventive insurance for uh, women, which would include contraception, that they were not pursuing the least restrictive means toward this end. And therefore there were uh, alternatives available, um, just like they had exceptions for nonprofit corporate, nonprofit religious groups. And he said that the existence of these alternatives showed that this particular uh, regulation could not survive a challenge under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Justice Ginsburg wrote the primary dissent in, for the court. In her dissent, she criticized well, what she said was the startling breadth of the majority's opinion. And she said that the uh, exemptions that the majority seemed to allow under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act might have um, some uh, implications for laws going well beyond a contraception uh, insurance coverage requirement. Justice Ginsburg turns the table. She says that the real uh, victims in this case, in essence, are not necessarily the owners of these companies, but the women who uh, no longer would have access to these very important forms uh, of birth control because of the company owner's religious beliefs. So what are the implications for the Hobby Lobby case? Uh, first thing it's important to note is that the Hobby Lobby case, at least according to the majority's rationale, there are some pretty specific limitations placed upon the reach of this opinion. So we see a debate in this case between a dissent who are saying that the implications of this could be drastic and the majority who are trying to say that no, the, uh, the facts of this case or the holding of this case is going to be tied quite closely to the facts of this case. But the question that we need to look to is um, future litigation because surely this decision is going to spawn future litigation by other companies, maybe challenging um, uh, provisions of the Affordable Care Act beyond just the uh, contraception mandate and perhaps even looking at uh, challenging regulations outside of uh, the Affordable Care Act. So this decision uh, tees up future litigation, but currently the court is divided uh, over whether, what the implications of this might be. There's also the question about what the impact of this decision is going to be on uh, women and their access to uh, contraception. And this too is a point of debate between the dissent and the majority. The dissent insisted that there is going to be a significant impact for people who are trying to get access uh, to um, health insurance to include uh, contraception, that the uh, majority opinion uh, could cut off access for a certain segment of uh, the population. The majority uh, argued that no, that there actually were uh, alternative methods that Congress could then respond by uh, providing coverage for people who are no longer covered by their companies. Uh, this is what they do when you have uh, nonprofit religi religious organizations. So the, the uh, court said that Congress could respond by doing the same for for-profit corporations that might fall under the exemption that the court identified in this particular case. So this too, we have to wait and see uh, how Congress will respond to see if it will close uh, the potential gap in coverage that was opened up by this decision.